This is a topic that's come up really frequently in the Flutterflow community, especially among new users. And so I wanted to make this short video to address it. Are Flutterflow apps scalable? No, Flutterflow apps do not scale well. Hope I've cleared that up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe so you never miss a new video. When people ask whether the apps are scalable, it often comes from a misunderstanding of how an app built with Flutterflow actually works. First though, what does scaling actually mean? To oversimplify, an app is scalable if it can handle increased load in the face of more users, more requests, or more data processing without degrading performance. An app may do this by means of vertical scaling or horizontal scaling. An app should ideally have elasticity, such that times of higher demand cost more, and costs are scaled back if demand is scaled back. I could talk about load balancers, network latency, storage, database optimization, caching, bandwidth, etc., yada, 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 but I don't want to distract from the point of this video. For the vast majority of Flutterflow users, any issues surrounding scaling will be solved by the backend as a service. These services really do have little to do with Flutterflow. They're actually used to power the majority of the world's biggest apps. And most notably, GCP, that's Google Cloud Platform, AWS, Amazon Web Services, and Microsoft Azure. So if you're truly certain that your brand new AI-enabled dating app for goat herders is definitely going to get 7 million downloads in its first week, and your first consideration just has to be that your servers are not going to accept the apocalyptic strain of your success, don't worry about Flutterflow. Worry about whatever backend you're using. For most Flutterflow users, this is probably going to be Supabase and or GCP, which Firebase is based on. And these services have a really innovative approach to scaling. Give us your money and we'll scale it for you. So where does Flutterflow fit into all of this? You've got to remember that Flutterflow's job is essentially just to build a bundle, be this in the form of an APK, IPA, or a JavaScript file. These files get downloaded once and then live on your device. So Flutterflow apps technically don't scale. The output of Flutterflow serves exactly one customer per bundle. It's the App Store's job to distribute this, and this is irrelevant from the point of view of scaling. So it's your backend that scales. This isn't built in Flutterflow and it will work just the same whether you're using Flutterflow or not. And you can use any backend you want. GCP and Supabase just happen to be the most popular because they are so deeply integrated with Flutterflow already. But that's not entirely the end of this oversimplified story. You do have control of how your app performs requests to your backend. If you've set up your backend poorly, it may be necessary to send a bloated number of requests maybe with bloated payloads from your Flutterflow app. But don't worry, because you can screw this up just as easily without using Flutterflow. And in fact, Flutterflow is probably the better choice because that code was written by former Google engineers with tons of cash rather than the free plan of ChatGPT. Another factor that's often on the forefront of people's minds when building a mobile application is the cost. So to learn about the costs involved in building a Flutterflow app, be sure to check out this video next. Thanks for watching.